us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. And to your spirit. The Holy Gospel is according to the evangelist Saint Matthew. A certain man came to Jesus, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water, and I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. <clears throat> then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Howbeit this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day, Shall he be raised again? Glory to the Lord. I'm sorry to announce that Father Chris had a medical emergency this week, so he's not here. But he will be here soon, thank God. And um, he had some sort of vision thing, similar to what my son Scott had a few weeks ago, where he suddenly went blind in one eye, and then it came back. And um, they say these things can often be eye migraines, as well as, of course, blood clots in the eye, which are very serious. But I think that he had just an eye migraine again or something like that. So he won't be with us, but he will be with us soon. So pray for him and his recovery, and for his modishka, that He'll soon be able to be with us and speak with us about the ministry of the OCMC. Today, we have a very good gospel for us to meditate upon. So often we think about this mountain that Jesus says that we can remove by prayer and fasting as being a physical mountain. A mountain like Mount Katahdin. And we think that if we only had enough faith, we could move that mountain of Mount Katahdin. Well, it's true that Many times, physical world, places and things are affected by prayer. That's not really what Jesus has in mind today. And we'll see that when we speak about the gospel. In our epistle, the Lord speaks about fathers. The apostle Paul, in 1 Corinthians there, chapter 4, sets himself as a father before the people. In our day and age, there's many who say, Citing the Lord's words, call no man father, that you can't call a priest father. Interesting, because in this very passage, Paul says, you don't have many fathers. I'm your father, in other words, your spiritual father. And so we have to consider before we get to our gospel, a little bit about spiritual fathers. We all need spiritual fathers and mothers. Spiritual people who can stand before us as icons of Christ to prove to us through the living work of God in their lives that God is alive and that God can meet our needs and God can save us and God can deliver us. Paul set himself before the people, before us in this day, as a spiritual father. He said, I have been a spiritual father to you in many things. And because of you, 
and my desire to be strong and to be true to the testimony of Christ in me. I've suffered hunger. I've suffered thirst. I've been naked. My clothes have been ripped off me. I've been buffeted. I've had no certain dwelling place, no home to come to regularly. I've labored, he says. I've worked with my own hands. We know he was a tent maker, a job that we would oftentimes find your hands pierced by needles and cut. And so he worked. He was reviled, he said. And yet being reviled, he blessed. He was persecuted. And he said, we suffered the persecution. We were defamed. We entreat. We're made as a filth in the world. And he says, and are the off-scouring of all things under this day. When you have a really dirty pot and you scrape off the things that have been burned to the pot. That's the picture of the dirt by which the world looked at the Apostle Paul, not seeing in him the Christ within. And yet for us who look back through the ages in faith, we see this man who was bruised and who was beaten and through it all still had the joy and the power of Christ in his life. This spiritual father has led many, many, many to Christ, both in his time when he walked on the earth and after his departure to the heavenly places through his words that he's left behind. They speak with power about the need that we all have for fathers and mothers, for people before us who are faithful to Christ, who can lead us so that we can follow him. He says at the end of this passage, he says, I beseech you, I beg you, I implore you, be followers of me. Be willing to labor, to be hungry for Christ. Be a spiritual mother and a spiritual father or a spiritual brother to those around you. Be willing to pay the price. These people that stand before us, in almost every case, are those which have showed us Christ and enabled us to believe. We need examples in this day and age of people who follow Christ, holy men, holy women, who give their lives to God's service and to the measure that's available to them of the faith within. They serve God and serve as lampposts for us. Those who have optimistic relationships with God are those that pick up our souls from the muck and mire of sin, from the oppression of the devil, and show us that victory in Jesus Christ is possible. To get victory is to get relief from sin. And so when the, the Lord Jesus speaks to the apostles in this passage, he's telling us that sin is something that everyone needs relief from. The purpose of the spiritual father and a spiritual mother is to lead us to Christ so we can get victory over something called sin. Sin, my brothers and sisters, is that mountain that oppresses us. Sin is that mountain that we need to get victory out of. We need to get out from underneath that mountain. We need to be freed from it. We need to be delivered from that mountain. And so it was that a father, a physical father, who also had spiritual concerns for his son, brought his son to Jesus. As a father, he brought him to the source of healing. This boy is oppressed by sin and by the devil. And so it was that this man comes, a certain man, and he kneels down, as we spoke last week about being at the feet of Jesus. He kneels down humbly before Jesus, and he begs the Lord to have mercy on his son. What a beautiful picture of a spiritual father or a mother beseeching God for the life, for the soul of a spiritual child, a son or a daughter. This man led his son as a father. He leads his son to the Lord for healing. Lest we think this healing is something that's minor, that you know, we just need to put a band-aid on ourselves. The Lord shows us the depth of sin by giving us an example, yes, which is physically and outwardly extreme, but which indicates the, the actual true state of every single person outside of Christ, inside. It may not be visible outside, but without Christ, this is what we are. This is the picture. We're lunatics. We're sore vexed. A lunatic is someone that's out of his mind that does things that don't make sense. In reality. It may make sense to him or to her, but 
but they don't make sense of reality. And so we are like lunatics. And it says we're sore vexed. We're, we're troubled. We're oppressed. We're sore. We hurt. This is what sin does to us. And it throws us around. We are slaves to sin. Don't be deceived that when we serve sin, we serve it as a slave. We don't have the ability to turn it off and to turn it on and to be free from it when we want to and then just submit when we have to because we need it for a moment or two. We become slaves when it says that oft times the sin, this mountain that oppressed this young man threw him into the fire of the passions. His sins buffeted him. They carried him to places he didn't want to go. They destroyed his life. They took him off course. They changed his direction, seemingly at the will of the sin. He had no control. He was a slave. It threw him into the fire. He falleth into the fire. And oft times it says he fell into the water, the cares of life, and was swept along as if when you're rowing down a stream and you capsize and into the rapids you go and you're just carried wherever the water will take you. A force greater than yourself carries you along against your will. This man complained. He said, Lord, I brought my son to those that follow you. And they've done many miracles, but they couldn't cure my son. And so here I am before you. And Jesus links the failure of the disciples to cure this young man to their lack of faith. He says, you couldn't cure him because of unbelief. Unbelief was a big problem. Lack of faith. They couldn't deliver this man and his son to solid ground to break the chains of slavery because something was missing called faith. Faith was very important. They needed faith. At the moment when that young man was brought to the disciples, their faith was weak. They didn't have the ability to cast out the demon. The demon was stronger at that moment than they were. And so the young man stayed in his sickness. Interestingly, when they had the opportunity to heal this young man, they had unbelief that plagued them in a way that didn't give them the spiritual strength to throw out the demon. But also I think they failed because they didn't bring the man then to Jesus. You note that the father had to bring the young man. The disciples didn't carry the boy to Jesus. And so it is with us. When we attack something in lack of faith, that alone is bad. That alone can be a cause of our failures. But when we fail to bring others to Jesus, to bring our cares to Jesus, and we're in our own strength, which is weak, we fail doubly. And so it was with this young man. Jesus criticized this generation by calling it faithless and perverse. Such a serious problem to be without faith. What's serious about it is that it separates us from God. One that doesn't have any faith isn't looking for God. They're in bondage to something and no cure is available to them. But it wasn't the disciples' lack of faith that caused this young man to be demon-possessed or possessed by sin and to be buffeted. It was the entire generation of those that knew not God. That weakness that came into this boy's life was a symptom of being apart from God, separated from God. This separation was due to lack of faith. If we don't believe God's there, we're not going to seek his healing. We're not going to seek his power. We're not going to journey to be at his feet and ask for a cure. And so in their separation from God, this faithless and perverse generation was certainly led to a sinful, alienated state, a weakened state, a sick state, a state of slavery to sin. Just as sure as it's true that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we don't seek God and we live without faith, our sins will encompass us and lead us farther and farther away from God like a whirlpool descending to the depths and an increase in perversion. 
perversion being turning away from truth will result. Unbelief has a cost, a very high cost, of turning us in our world, in our own personal lives, upside down. When this child was cured, the apostles saw it. I'm sure they were very happy. I know the young man was happy, and I know his father was very happy. And as they sat there, with Jesus later apart, alone, they asked him this question. A question that we should ask if we look at our lives, and we see our lives in slavery. We see ourselves buffeted, cast into the fire of sin and passion. They said, why? Why? Why can we not? Why could we not cast him out? Why could we not free this one? And Jesus says again, your unbelief. He said, if you had faith, if you really believed in me and what I'm able to do, when you brought your cares to me, you would have been able to say unto a mountain, remove, be thou cast into the sea, and it should be done. But he said, not just any mountain. He said, this mountain, this mountain that faced this boy, the mountain of sin and oppression from the demons and from the devil and from the cares of this world, this is the mountain that God said by prayer and fasting we could cast it out. If we're buffeted today and sin's oppressing us, it's like a mountain. We're enslaved to it. It descends on us without our control. It carries us to places we want to go in its last state. That's the, that's the end of sin. Destruction. It's like a mountain. It's an intransigent presence which can't be moved by any human means. We're powerless before the mountain of sin until we decide that there's a God in heaven. And in belief, we turn to him. It's not a minor thing, though, this mountain. It's not something that we can just say a quick prayer and the mountain goes away. When we have a sin that besets us like this sin that beset this young man, when we're really being cast into the fire, not just burned a little bit, but burned all over, when it's not just minor brush burns, but these heavy burns that go right through the skin, we need to seriously seek God in prayer and fasting. We need to look to the Lord when we're trapped and we can't seem to find a way out. When we look to Jesus, we find him so strong. It's like the apostles after this healing. They said, why, why couldn't we do it? It looks so easy for you, Lord. You could heal this man in a moment just by a word. And for us, it was impossible to move the mountain. And you, just by a word, did it. This is when we come to the Lord, we find the truth is that he's able to heal. He's willing to heal. He wants to heal us. And he wants to remove the mountain that's in our life. This mountain that burdens us, that causes us to be cast into the fire. Our fathers and our spiritual mothers give us examples through the ages and through the history of the church of how God is able to deliver. The Apostle Paul was a great example of deliverance, let down in a basket from the wall to escape, buffeted with stones and left with dead and yet raised by God. Over and over again, those that watched his life, we that read about his life, are encouraged and we turn to God and we ask him to heal us in the same power by which he worked in the Apostle Paul and in the apostles Bartholomew and Titus that we commemorate today. May God grant us the ability to turn to him in faith and ask him to remove the mountain that's in our life. It's not just a speck, my brothers and sisters, that keeps us from God. It's a mountain, it's a log, it's a beam. And the Lord seeks to deliver us. Might we turn to him with prayer and fasting for ourselves and for our spiritual children, that they be delivered from sin and from the mountain that it is in our lives. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.